Hello there, you may remember me from my other video, How to Pronounce the Names of the Greek Gods by a Greek. So now I'm making the second video that I promised I would make that took a little too long because I was too busy. Um, the Greek equivalents of the Roman gods and how to pronounce their Greek names. So this video may be less interesting than the first one, but it's still kind of interesting to see what the Greek versions of the Roman gods are, despite the fact that how to actually pronounce their names is incorrect because pretty much the English pronunciation pronunciation is correct because English is derived from Latin though I am not entirely sure because I don't know Latin so without further ado let's get into it Bacchus Bacchus is quite obviously Dionysus which is Dionysos in Greek um, fun fact actually in the game files he's still referred to as Dionysus so we're gonna skip Bologna for a very good reason and we're gonna go to Cupid Cupid in Greek mythology is Eros which in Greek in the modern day, you would refer to him as Erotas, but in some places and in and way further back in time, he would have also been referred to as Eros. Um, but nowadays, he would, he's pretty much just called Erotas. And actually, I want to call out somebody and a lot of people. Actually, a lot of these mythology and history YouTube channels that talk about various Greek myths and everything. Um, Here's what I want to call them out on. A lot of them talk about the story of Eros and Psyche, or Psyche, and all of them neglect the fact that Psyche's name means, which is Psyche, means soul. So the story is very simple. Eros uh, is, is given a task to make this young woman, Psyche, fall in love, but he is struck so much by her beauty, he stabs himself with one of his arrows, and he falls in love with her. The moral of the story is that, you know, love is found in somebody's soul, not in their appearance, even though it was the appearance that initially, you know, lit the flame, it's more about the person's soul. So here's something that I want to mention about Greek mythology that a lot of people may not know about, and this is an interesting talking point, is that a lot of these uh, YouTube channels, uh, one of them in particular, but I'm not going to say which one, mentioned how weird it is that people believe in this myth. P no Greek has ever believed that the story of Eros and Psyche is a, is a literal tale. A lot of Greek mythology is actually meant to teach lessons. This is why it's so well written and the gods behave like children and humans, you know. They're meant to teach lessons, they're meant to be a reflection of humanity. There were plenty of atheists in ancient Greece, though nobody will tell you this. Oh, and this is why, in modern Greece, these stories are still taught to us. Even though Greece today is a Christian Orthodox country, the mythology of ancient Greece is still alive because of its philosophies. Unfortunately, in most of modern Greece, this is lost to people. A lot of them don't grow up learning about these ancient Greek myths, so they lose the Greek way of life, which is kind of how I live. Um, I know all of the myths and all of the legends, and I live by the philosophy of ancient Greece. And I think every Greek should and every person should. And these legends are not meant to be taken seriously. They're meant to be purely metaphorical. And in case you're wondering, atheist, not actually Christian. So now we're moving on to Bologna and Discordia. Discordia's Greek name is Ennio, uh, which is pronounced, which I pronounce in the Greek way, it's Ennio. And Eris is Eris or Erida. It's again a similar situation like Eros, where further back she would have been called Eris, uh, but in more modern Greek she's referred to as Erida. Um, so the interesting thing about these two gods is that um, they were two separate gods that eventually became one. They got fused into Erida. Erida absorbed a lot of the attributes of Ennio, but not before the Romans had their own version of her. In fact, in Homer's writings, even though he sort of confuses the two, uh, because they're kind of interchangeable, they're very similar, uh, but they are two different gods. Uh, Erida is part of, at least in some legends, part of the Twelve Olympian gods, while Ennio is a demon, a demon or more modern Greek version, Demonas. So, here's the thing about demons in ancient Greece. <coughs> they sneeze a lot. But also, um, 
<laughs> but also, they're not necessarily evil like the Christian version will have you believe. They're actually both good and evil depending on the situation. Um, so yeah, Bologna is technically a demon. Um, but Bologna is so different from Ennio that even though she is based on her, I wouldn't necessarily call them the same entity like most of the gods. There are some gods that the Romans did take and change them over time. Which is why Roman mythology is considered different from Greek mythology. Even though they are extremely similar and Roman is obviously based on Greek mythology, they're still different enough. So, you know, it's a weird situation. So then we move on to Hercules. Who you think that his... Um, <laughs> you think that his Greek name is also Hercules, but it's not. It's... Heracles, because he is named after Hera, the goddess in the game. Now, if you grew up with the Disney movie, I'm about to ruin some stuff for you, because Hera wasn't actually his mother. Uh, yep, and Hera was actually the one that tried to kill him. And she is also the one that made him crazy one day and killed his entire family. So, his name in Greek is Heracles. And it's actually a name that's still in use today. Um, still in use today. But here's the, I know plenty of people called Heracles, but when they anglicize their name, they do refer to themselves as Hercules and not Heracles, which is incorrect. And I, <laughs> you know, it's so weird correcting somebody about their name, but, you know, for the sake of accuracy, I'm gonna get a slap in the face. I don't mind. I'll take, I'll take that L. I'll take it. Don't worry about it. So, <laughs> then we move on to Janus and Mercury. Yes, both of them together. So Mercury's equivalent in ancient Greece is Hermes or Hermes, as you would refer to him, but to us is Hermes. Now, interesting thing is that Hermes. Um, has many attributes. He is the god of messaging, which yes, technically involves Messenger, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Uh, but he is also uh, the god of trade and passageways, which, yeah, eventually got separated into its own separate entity in Roman mythology, which is Janus. Uh, sometimes this can happen as well, because Hermes himself is actually a separation of Pan. It's theorized by some people uh, that Hermes is actually a stone structure called an Hermes, which is why his name in Greek sounds very strange to Greeks, uh, because it's the name of an item rather than a person. Yeah, they're different. Uh, and, and it is believed that he got separated from Pan uh, a long, long time ago. But I'll get to Pan in a minute, don't worry about that. So, it's kind of also strange to see him separated once more into two different gods in Roman mythology, Janus and Mercury. And here's an interesting difference between Hermes and Mercury. Even though they seem kind of identical, there's actually a huge difference. Hermes' primary feature is that he can fly. Now, in Greek mythology, not all gods can fly. Fun fact, especially early on, um, but in later iterations, like the Iliad and the Odyssey, which is actually kind of late in, Gre in Greece, it's kind of like, uh, I think like 700 AD, uh, or 800, round about there. Most gods do fly, but in earlier, in earlier myths and legends, and way older ones, uh, Hermes is pretty much the only god that can fly, along with Zeus, and maybe Athena. Maybe. Uh, so... In Roman mythology, however, almost all of the gods fly. It's actually kind of unusual for a god not to fly in Roman mythology. So, to make Mercury a bit more unique from the other gods, they just gave him super speed. So, there's an interesting difference for you. So, Nox, uh, the Greek version is Nyx, and her Greek name is Nichta. Uh, she is the goddess of night, so her name is literally the word for night in Greek. Um, then there is Sylvanas. I would love and also hate to do this to you, but Grover is an entirely fictionalized character. Yep, he does not exist in neither Roman nor Greek mythology. He was entirely made up by high-rise. 
uh, Grover isn't real, but Sylvanas is, and Sylvanas is Pan from Greek mythology. Now, Pan is actually one of the oldest gods in the world in terms of anthropology, not in terms of like myths or anything. Depictions of a god similar to Pan have been dated way, way back in ancient Europe. I can't even mention the date, but just imagine it's way, way back. And there's actually a lot of gods in uh, European religions that are based off the original Pan. Pan isn't even the original one. It's actually a god that's way further back and we don't know the name of. In fact, Coronanos, which is in the game in Celtic mythology, is a derivative version of that god. Um, so, Sylva uh, so, yeah, Sylvanas is quite human-like, but Pan, the Greek version, looks a lot more like Coronanos, but he has a pan flute. So, that's why it's actually called a pan flute, because, you know, it's pans. Uh, <laughs> belongs to Pan, the Greek god, but, <coughs> what was I going with this? Sorry, my ADHD is playing up, but yeah, Coronanos, Sylvanas, technically come from the same god, and you could introduce Pan into the game, I can see many ways that that would work, um, but you know, then you have three gods in the game that are based on the same one. Fascinating stuff, uh, if you actually look up anthropology and where all of these myths and religions come from, though unfortunately you may find out some things about your own. So, uh, kind of a give and take situation. And then we get to Terra, which is Gaia. Um, now, in more ancient Greek versions, she would be referred to as Gaia, but in modern Greek she is referred to as Yi, which is the word for Earth, which you may also notice if you read Greek mythology, she is a Titan. Uh, so, yeah, I found it kind of weird when Terra was introduced into the game, because technically she was the first Titan in the game. Um, yeah. Now, theories that at the end of the year Atlas would be introduced into the game, which would technically be the first Titan from Greek mythology in the game. Um, but technically it was Terra, because her Greek version is a Titan. I don't want to go into this, but I'm just putting it out there. So then finally we have... Vulcan. Vulcan is quite obviously Hephaestus, which is Hephaestus. Fun fact, uh, the word for volcano comes from Vulcan, and the Greek word for volcano, Hephaestio, comes from Hephaestus. So, that's the video. I will make another video, uh, a v much, much shorter one, don't worry, it's going to be around five minutes, um, about Greek gods that you have never heard of that I would actually love to see in Smite. Um, so that's the video for today, fuck off.